Go for them here means we get a winner's interview. It is going to be Kuroki joining us. Congratulations on the 2-0 and for staying in Division 1, Kuroki. How does it feel? Thank you very much. Um, relief, of course. Yeah. So we're happy. Yeah, uh, we were just talking about how there's been a lot of growth for you guys. It was a rough start uh, at the beginning of this tour. But for you personally, what do you think has been the biggest growth and is now the strongest part of Nigma Galaxy? Well, we felt like we have been constantly improving with this team. Um, we just got good a little bit too late. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, we feel like we're getting better and better. Our training results are pretty good. Um, we feel confident. That's really it, yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, again, congratulations on the win and staying in Division 1. Um, I was going to ask, how did you go about kind of bringing in both a mortal faith and then a ma and then of course your original ideas with Nigma. you basically you picked up very kind of vocal individuals in the dota scene like how did you go about trying to morph three kind of personalities into one single team um so a mortal face he reached out to me after ti ended and we wanted to try some new things uh we had a really good run with uh, roman he's one of my best friends mm -hmm. but change is needed sometimes um and Amar it was like uh it was like a mix. He was interested in playing for us, he had some offers from other teams, but he decided to play for us. Uh, Miracle decided to take a break, so we needed a carry. And we went with him. Now the personality wise, um it's interesting. They are indeed uh quite vocal, strong opinions, but we feel it's uh good for the team overall. They bring new things, immortal faces Amazing coach, Amar has his own ideas, and we just roll with it. Mm -hmm. And one quick additional question. We don't see Immortal Faith in the background during drafts. Is he doing his coaching remotely? And if so, how does that kind of work with the team? Like during the, the breaks, you can't really go outside and stuff. Like how, how does it work within the team? Yeah, currently he's not with us. Mm -hmm. um, so he's doing it remotely. It's It's been working well. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, Hello, congratulations on your win. I wanted to ask kind of about you over time of your entire Dota career. Like, what was your motivation like back, you know, when you sort of started and how you, you know, what made you want to play back then compared to like now? Like, how has that changed and how have you grown and differed? Uh, I mean, obviously it changed. I mean, I've been doing this for what, 20 years or something? I remember my first competitive game, I was 11 years old. Now I'm 30. So <laughs> back then, <laughs> my motivation was to just be the best player individually. And I became that in Dota 1. I was the best mid laner in carry. And then afterwards, when Dota grew and I realized, oh, you can earn good money with it, it was pretty much when uh, Valve took over. My main motivation was just to, to do that. I wanted to support my parents. It drove me so much. Hmm. And Alhamdulillah, I got everything in my life. I won TI. I won, I don't know, 40 tournaments. I did a lot of stuff. And now it's the motivation is different. I mean, I don't even believe in motivation. It's It's a lot of hard work because by the time I won TI7. I was already tired, like really tired. I've been already doing this for such a long time. And before that, I played with Secret, and uh, it was a bit of a tiring experience, uh, what happened afterwards. I had to rebuild like a new team fully, become captain, which I didn't really enjoy. Yeah, I was tired. You know, it wasn't really motivation. It was more like I have to do this. Um, it was like a mission. And it still feels this way somewhat. And nowadays, I would say, I mean, I still love what I'm doing. I'm really grateful. I have certain people who really want to see me win. I think that drives me the most. Like some people in my life, they they just love seeing me play and win. I'm doing this for them. I'm doing this for all the people working in Nick My Galaxy. We have such a good support staff here. I'm also doing this for my teammates. I mean, some of my teammates, I'm playing with them. And I'm playing with MC for what? Eight years. He's like my brother. And then I have GH. Seven years. They're my brothers. We have such a strong bond with each other. Um, I mean, this is the maybe strongest bond team in all of esports, I believe. Because we just 
We just really love playing with each other. We had good times. We had three, four really good years, amazing years. The last two years, result-wise, not so good, obviously, missing TI. But other than that, our life is good. I think we we always try to express gratitude and understand that our life is very good. This is just a stupid video game at the end of the day. And we're really lucky to do this. So yeah, I enjoy doing it. I have uh, people who love watching me win. And I'm also doing this for myself, of course. Uh, there's a part of me that cares about legacy, but at the same time, none of this really matters to me. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but there's bigger okay. things in life, you know? And I believe in bigger things. So I, I just love doing what I'm doing with these guys and very grateful. And of course, uh, we have uh, fans who really love to watch us win too. And there's like a lot of fans that are really waiting for a comeback. So I want to deliver and inshallah, we'll do it. Oh my God, thank you so much. I don't have any other question that could possibly follow up how good that answer was. It was mm -hmm. very touching. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. Because you're going to have to try and follow okay. up there. My God. Hi, <laughs> Kuro. Grats on the win. <laughs> you just answered like half of my questions, but I'll try to keep it somewhat short. So as you said, you guys missed out on the last two TIs. Can you tell me about... Uh, of course, it's really hard to stay together, and I think it's very honorable that that happened. Can you tell me about some of the talks you guys had together that you know, led you to actually stay together as a core? So when we lost the first TI quals for TI-10, that hit us really hard. Um, when it was the first TI we missed. Um, to be honest, there was uh, never a moment where it felt like anyone wanted to leave the team. Obviously, we had to talk. Who wants to stay can stay. Uh, my teammates are amazing players. I think they could play for any team, all of these players, and be a bonus. What everyone expressed, they just want to stay in this group of people and make it work, even if it's hard. We all know it's hard. I think we all felt like, hey, this might be not just like two month hard times, you know, maybe a year or two. And um, we just stick through it and we're trying to make it work. Um, we we have something, it's called hope. <laughs> we just, we're very hopeful. We ne We never despair. We really believe we can do it. It just might take some more time than we like. And at the end of the day, what's really important for us is to give it our all and everyone is working so hard. So at the end of the day, we can always say, we really tried our best. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. We had a great time anyway, but once again, we are hopeful and I do believe we'll get on top again. Okay, this is the best interview. So am I allowed one more question? Yeah, of course. Okay, I'll give you two options. I have a, <laughs> one question about the Caudal, and the other question is, after the Liquid series, I think something changed with you guys within the team. I don't know if it was draft or gameplay. So if you agree, could you elaborate on what suddenly clicked or changed for you guys? Um, I start with the Caudal question. So what was the question about the Caudal exactly? Uh, I mean, why do you guys rate it so highly? It's a hero that we have not mm. seen so... I mean, in a while. Do you value it for its high tempo? Is it the sustain? Is it both? Does Sumail just say, yo, give me Coddle, I'll shit on this game? <laughs> <laughs> Something along these lines. But um, <laughs> <There> we, <go. laughs> we, <laughs> we enjoy the hero. We have uh, great Coddle players. Uh, GH has always been known to be a great Coddle player. And Sumail is, I think, the best Coddle from the core position. And he, he actually asked for it. Um, we liked it in the past, too. Um, then he got nerfed. And then he started feeling the hero again. We started looking at strategies around it. And as you see, he just, I mean, his performance, you know, it's yeah. insane on the hero. It does wonders for us. And in our tempo, I mean, you already said what it is. You understand Dota very well. It makes all the tempo stuff happen for us. So it's uh, it's an easy pickup for us, to be honest. Um, regarding your second question, uh, actually, <laughs> Sorry, can you repeat it? <laughs> so after the Liquid series, I mean, even the first game against OG, it ah, was yeah. the game where you played DP, like and Sven. I think you probably had very good chances of winning that too. But after the Liquid series, I yeah. think something changed. Could you elaborate? Um, for us, the big change was after the ITB series. So okay. after we played Tundra, we felt like, okay, we went to one against Tundra. No shame there. They were still coming 
kind of fresh off the TI win, as in that's their first official games. We thought we played decent against Tundra, obviously not good enough to win. Then we played ITP and things crashed. We just got destroyed. That was our hardest series in DPC mm -hmm. so far. They uh, took us by surprise, came one with the Lycan. We felt our strategies were super off. And then we changed some things in the team. Uh, we changed uh, a little bit the way we like look at the game. We had uh, some talks and the change started from there. Mm -hmm. And um, then we played Liquid. We didn't play Liquid after Tundra, right? We played uh, it was some other Gaiman team. Gladiators and then you played Liquid. Yeah, Gaiman. Yeah. yeah, we played Gaiman. We thought the game slipped for sure. The series mm -hmm. slipped. And then we played Liquid, game one, we definitely felt like that was our game, but got outplayed. Liquid uh, obviously looks like the strongest team. They played more clutch in the um, moments where it mattered. Game two, we got just ran over, so let's not talk about that. <laughs> but the change happened after the ITB series, and then from there was a gradual mm -hmm. like process. And it got better and better for us. And so we feel confident because um, our practice games are good. We we have like uh, like I think 80% win rate. Obviously, like scrims don't matter because you know real games are a bit different. But when you win a lot, you you know like all right, like we're doing well. Sometimes, uh, and I've been there. We've been there as as Nick my Galaxy. Sometimes you just lose 20 scrims in a row. And you know, right? Like you're in some deep holes. Yeah. But we're not there. Like we're doing well. We thought we don't perform up to our standard in official games. There's something about DPC that doesn't uh, suit us. It doesn't suit all <laughs> all the old guys. I'll be honest. Like, like I mean, we look at Secret. You know, it's like I I understand. Uh, they had a last like last year. It was hard for them too. Just you know, puppy smash it with his guys and TI. But the DPC it wasn't good last year. And yeah. This year, nothing changed. And then I look at the other guys, like uh, the OG, the old OG. They they didn't even make it to Div 2. Like They're also like, oh, wow, this is really hard for us. It's just such a different environment than we're used to. This is uh, not our edge at all. It's uh, I would say it, uh, it's a disadvantage for, let's say, the old school players mm -hmm. and a big advantage for the new school players, which is good for the scene. It brought out all these talents. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, I think we're all done with questions. Thank you so much for the amazing interview, the fantastic answers, and congratulations again on staying in Division 1 and picking up a win today. Thank you very much, guys. See ya. Congratulations. Thank you. Guys. Wow. <laughs> I think I need what? to go home and cry. That was so wholesome. Yeah. Man gives phenomenal interviews. It's like you give him a question and then he just opens up his heart and you're like, okay, all right. <laughs> I was already. Damn. Like, oh, yeah, oh I was we needed the tissues. <laughs> I was about to let it skip me. Like, I can't. I can't. I'm I can't follow start crying. Like. It's the human aspect of Dota, right? And it's yeah. like people are very easy to you know, say things, but mm -hmm. when you hear his answers and the fact that they're understanding of their two year position, yeah. the journey that they're taking, it's a two, maybe three, four year journey. Like, yeah. Ease off a bit. Let them go on that process. I mean, look, it is an upward trend for them. They're back in Division 1. They've secured a spot to stay here. We can have a look at the results for today so you guys know all the series, how they played out. Uh, we started off the day with Liquid up against OG. Uh, that one went uh, to three games. <laughs> I totally forgot already. Liquid did end up taking it. Tundra and Gaming Gladiators was the second series. That one though was significantly quicker. It was a 2-0 for Gaming Gladiators. And then here in the third series, a 2-0 for Nick McGalaxy as well. We might as well